Hi, my name is Ahmed Dari Lawal, a computer teacher of Nigerian Tony International Colleges. Uh, this video you're about to watch is about the solution to the first 10 question of Wahe 2015 uh, for data processing. So let's roll together. have the first question here that says, which of the following persons invented the punch card machine? A, Liz Pasteur, B, Godfrey Lebanese, C, J. Prosper Hercut, and D, Dr. Eamon Olerith. Ah, now, let's look at this four gentlemen, and uh, this will be, take us back to the history of computer. Now, looking at the first person that we have here, which is Blaise Pascal, he was a French philosopher and scientist. He was born on June 19, 1623, in clermont ferrand somewhere in France. And the picture we are seeing here is the Pascal calculator, which is a mechanical calculator invented by Blaise Pascal between 1642 and 1644. Now, let's look at Godfrey Leibniz. He was a German polymath, active as a mathematician, philosopher, scientist, and diplomat, born on the 1st of July, 1646. And the picture we have here is the Leibniz calculator, which was a mechanical calculator invented by Godfrey Leibniz around 1672 and completed in 1694. Now, moving forward to John Prosper Haircut, uh, he was born on April 9th. 1919. He was an American electrical engineer and computer pioneer. And uh, with John Mowley, he designed the first general purpose electronic digital computer, which we know as the ENIAC, uh, which is the electronic numerical integrator and computer. Now, let's look at Dr. Eman Olivier. Uh, he was born on February 29, 1860. He was a German American statistician inventor and businessman who developed an electromechanical tabulating machine for punch cards. All right, now the machine we are seeing here is the punch card tabulating machine, which will take us back to the question we asked that says, which of the following person invented the punch card machine? So of course we have our answer, who is uh, Dr. Eman Olerith. All right, let's move to question two. Question two says, convert 47 base eight to its binary equivalent. Of course, we have our four option here, and this is more of calculation. So let's get to work. Uh, first of all, we're going to convert the 47 uh, base eight to base 10. And after this, we're going to convert it to base two, which will give us the binary equivalent we are looking for. So using the expansion method, we are going to use the face value here, which is four and seven. We'll place it in such a way that we can multiply the base value with the base value. All right, now we're going to place our base value with the place value. Now you can see the place value here and the base value. This is our face value four and seven. So we have the base value and the place value. And the place value is starting from zero here to one, two, and so on, depending on the value you're being given to convert. Now we only have two values, so we're making use of zero and one. So if we proceed, anything raised to the power of zero will give us one, and anything raised to the power of one will give us the same value. And we are going to have something like this. And afterward, we can now multiply seven times one and uh, four times eight, which will give us 32 plus seven. And uh, finally, we are going to have 39 base 10. Now we have successfully converted 47 base eight to base 10. So, we are now going to take it to base two, which will give us the binary equivalent we looking for. So, converting it to base two, we are going to use the division method. You can have your table and place your value. So, I uh, will continue to divide this value by two, and uh, we are going to stop at whenever it's zero, where yeah, it is indivisible. So moving forward, we are going to say uh, 2 divided by 39, this will give us 19, remainder 1. And when we continue, 2 divided by 19, this will give us 9, still remainder 1. Then 2 divided by 9 will give us 4, remainder 1. And 2 divided by 4 will give us 2, 
remainder zero this time. And two divided by two will give us one remainder zero, and two divided by one will give us zero remainder one. So this will no longer be divisible because we continue to have zero, zero, zero. So we have to stop here. And then we're going to take the value from the list now from one, zero, zero, one, one, one. And then we're going to have something like this as the answer, which is one, zero, zero, one, one, one to base two. And as you can see, the one that we have here is the one here. The zero is this. The other zero is this, the one we have here is this, the other one is this, and the last one is this. So definitely we have our answer. Now let's look at the option back again. Among the option, which one is similar to our answer? We have the first option, which is definitely the answer. So now we can be sure that he is our answer. So moving forward to question three, that says the operation of checking input data against specified criteria is referred to as A, the data verification, B, data validation, C, data cross-check, and D, data control. Now, looking at this question, we need to, first of all, look at what data verification means. And data verification is a process in which different types of data are checked for accuracy and inconsistency after data migration is done. It says after data migration is done. All right, now let's look at data validation, which means uh, checking the accuracy and quality of source data before using, importing, or otherwise processing data. This is basically before checking your input before it's actually allowed it. Does it apply to the specified criteria? All right, let's move to this option C, which is data cross-check. And it means uh, rechecking the data to make sure they have been entered accurately. This is all about rechecking your data. All right, let's look at the last option, data control, which means uh, it's simply the process of governing and managing Data. So this is a process of governing and managing data. So definitely, when we go back to this question, we say the operation of checking the input data against specified criteria is refers to as uh, what? So definitely, this is data validation because this is a check and for accuracy and quality of source data before you use it. Says before using important, otherwise processing data. So definitely the Validation has to be set for you input any of your data and the system will check, does it comply with the criteria set? And we can definitely add this option in Microsoft Assets as well in Excel. All right, so we have our answer, which is data validation. So moving forward to the first question that says, which of the following is not a source of data collection? Uh, what is data collection in the first place? Data collection is the process of collecting, measuring, and analyzing data from various sources to gain insights. And uh, when we look at the sources of data collection, you can have uh, surveys, interviews, observation, focus group, experiments, and secondary data analysis. So going back to this question, let's say observation. Definitely, observation is part of the source of data collection. Interview is one of the sources. Sources as well, yes, definitely. And questionnaire, we can also question in order to work together. Our sources more like a survey question. So, and classification this is actually when you're analyzing your data, you want to classify the data you have. So, this does not actually belong to source of data collection. So, definitely, we have our answer, which is option D e, classification. So moving forward to question five that says, which of the following is true about digital computer? A, they consist of magnetic core memory. B, they recognize data as a continuous measurement of a physical quantity. C, they represent numbers through a string of binary digits. And D, they are mainly used for scientific purposes. All right. Now, this will take us to the classification of computer according to the types of technology, because we are actually talking about digital computing now. And uh, when we talk about classification of computer according to the type of technology, we have the analog computer, we have the digital computer, and we can have the hybrid computer. 
So uh, let's look at the analog computer. These are a form of continuously being visible quantities. And the digital computer are used to process information using the binary number system zeros and one. Binary number system zeros and one. All right. Now let's look at the hybrid that combine the analog and digital features in a single machine. So when we look at the digital device and the option that we have here, and uh, we definitely know that the option C that says they represent numbers through a string of binary digits is the absolute correct answer that we have here. So definitely uh, we have our answer, which is option C. So moving forward to question six, that says Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp are examples of Dash is a, a social media, B social communication, C networking media, and D search engine. Uh, we already know the Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp to be a form of our social media a website or application that we use for our social activity. And uh, when we look at social communication here, uh, Definitely, this uh, does not necessarily have to do with a device or digital website application. It doesn't really have to do with that. We can do this even locally. We can, have, we can communicate locally without the use of devices or anything. I want to look at the option C, the networking media. This is basically about a computer network, you know, all about connecting the various nodes of the computer, you know, bringing them together to share resources and whatever. And that is not what we actually have here. And when we talk about the search engine as well, the option D, this is a web-based tool through which we search the internet. So definitely, these are not what we, uh, the, the question is talking about because this is a social media network. Facebook is a social media network, Twitter, WhatsApp, and so on. And what is social media? Uh, these are websites and applications that enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. So that is what social media is. And as you can see, all our Facebook, Twitter, and so on are, are, are for our media through which we communicate social. So the correct answer is, hey, this is just a straightforward question. We don't have to waste our time. So uh, moving forward to question seven, that says, which of the following is not an application of computer? Is it a bank load counter? Is it a point of sale terminal? Is it an automated terminal machine or the traffic light control? Uh, looking at this question, they say, which is not an application of computer? And looking at these devices, we can see a lot of similarities with computer because we say computer is an electronic device that can accept data, process the data and give out the output as a meaningful information. So definitely, these three devices work in such a way, except the traffic light control. These are all electronic devices, and this is more of electrical. So definitely, we have an answer, which is option D, the traffic light control. Now, let's look at the next question that we have, which is question eight that says, which of the following is a secondary storage device? We have A, RAM, we have B, bubble memory, we have C, floppy disks, and we have D, EPROM. Um, <clears throat> this uh, will kind of take us to the computer memory. Now, let's look at the computer memory itself. The computer memory is subdivided into two. We have the primary memory and the secondary memory. And the primary memory, we can also refer to this as the internal memory and this as the external memory. So the primary memory includes the RAM, the ROM, and so on, while the secondary memory includes the RT, CDs, DVD, floppy disks, and so on as well. So when we go back to the option we have here, we have RAM. Of course, this belongs to the primary memory. Bubble memory is another internal memory of the computer, although it is not volatile in nature. And uh, floppy disk, definitely, this is an example of the secondary memory. And uh, when we look at the uh, APROM, this also belongs to the primary memory, only that it is erasable and programmable read-only memory. So our answer here is option C, which we can see from the diagram here, because we are asked which of the following is a secondary storage device. So floppy disk is a secondary storage device, as we can see from the diagram. So moving forward to question nine, 
Information analysis procedures includes the following except A, scheme and scan, B, recognizing interrelationships, C, interpret and conclude, and D, identifying propaganda and bias. So let's look at what information analysis is. Uh, information analysis is the systematic process of discovering and interpreting information. A process of what? Discovery and interpreting information. So definitely during these processes, we are not talking about any skin and scan. We're not talking about a skincare or a thing or so. But definitely during the process, we are going to recognize the interrelationship of the information we analyze it. And of course, we're going to interpret and draw a conclusion to the information we're analyzing. And we can also, uh, during the process, identify propagandas and bias during the same process. So definitely, the answer we have here is A, which is talking about the skin and scan that we are not concerned with when it comes to information analysis procedure. Uh, that is that, and uh, we can say we have an answer, which is option A. So let's look at question 10, it says the advantages of electronic data processing include the following except A, automatic processing, B, hacking, and C, fast and reliable processing, then D, storage capacity. Now, uh, let's look at this critically. What is the electronic data processing means? Uh, the EDP refers to the gathering of data using electronic devices, such as what? The computer, servers, or calculator. And uh, let's look at the advantages that we're talking about here of EDP. Number one advantage here is speed. Without speed, accuracy, automatic operation, decision-making capacity, and storage capacity, less expensive, and so forth. So uh, when we look at the option that we have here, we can see automatic processing is part of the advantages. We can say fast, the speed, the reliable, there's a speed and accuracy, of course, and D, the storage capacity. We're looking at option B, which is arcade, it's quite different from the advantage because what does ARCHI mean? This is just a process of uh, uh, gaining unauthorized access to the computer. So definitely it is not an advantage of electronic data process. It's, it's when one is trying to gain an unauthorized access to the system. So that is what ARCHI means. So definitely that is not an advantage. I believe you agree with me. So uh, thank you very much. We have an answer here and uh, uh, so glad you're with me and uh, I would love to really see you in my next episode. This is just my first 10 question of data processing while in 2015. Thank you and bye for now.